Hello. Welcome to Season 11 of The Horrific Podcast. We're two friends who live in different places but share a love for scary movies. This season, in each episode, we will not both watch the same movie on our own and then record a conversation together about it later. We have ten previous seasons of doing exactly that, and it's time for something new. This season, each episode will focus on a larger horror topic, trend, or maybe even rumor. We'll speculate about upcoming movies, debate genre definitions, and do our best to apply the perspective of two people who have watched way too many horror movies to different types of horror media. Thanks for coming along for the ride. So as we continue here through season 11, one of the themes that we keep kind of coming back to is horror subgenres and how those get split up and what we like and what we don't like and uh, what we think are maybe useful distinctions versus not. And early on, one of the things that we talked about was a list from popcornhorror.com that had horror basically divided up into the subgenres gore and disturbing, psychological, killer, monster, and paranormal. And so this week, we are going to talk about paranormal horror movies, also known as supernatural horror movies. Would you say this is your favorite genre? Well, I think... That it is to some extent, but it is also one of the hardest to nail down. Because as I was going back through movies, I find it really hard to distinguish between monster movies and paranormal movies. And so that got me digging in a little bit to try and figure out a better like definition for paranormal. And one of the quotes that I read was from a guy named Matthias Clayson. And he said, supernatural horror involves some kind of suspension or break of physical law, usually embodied in or caused by some kind of supernatural agency, such as an uncanny monster or ghost. By that definition, I kind of think stuff like Jeepers Creepers would fall into it. But I definitely had previously thought of that more of a monster movie than a paranormal one. Yeah, I think when it comes to like Jeepers Creepers, Frankenstein, all those, I guess Frankenstein's a bad example. I was going to say, it's not necessarily a story of how they got there. It's just that they're there. Supernatural sometimes explains what's going on and how they got there and why the person's possessed. So basically what I'm saying is, the guy you quoted, he's got it coming. (laughs) Well, so I got, yeah, it, and it's hard. And, and that's one thing that I think is interesting about this discussion is sort of the blending of the different types of genres and how over time I feel like they've kind of informed each other. Yeah. But in that list I was looking at on popcorn horror, it had paranormal divided up into sub sub genres, which were ghosts and spirits, haunted house, possession, devil and demons in hell, which is in a cult, and then finally supernatural power, which could be, you know, like psychic power type stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I would have a hard time putting the Jeepers Creepers stuff into that anywhere. Mm-hmm. But like by that previous definition, I think it would. So I kind of think for this discussion, we should go with the sub sub genres from this site. Because I think that will help us have a lot more clarity. What yeah, do you think? I mean, when when I say when when I'm saying supernatural, paranormal, I'm talking, you know, like witches, goblins, ghosts, devils. So I'm not done yet. Afterlife, demonic possession. I'm done now. Sorry. But what about just old-fashioned demons? Yeah, I mean. I would say so. And so then what's the difference between a demon and the creature from Jeepers Creepers? Well, because the creature from Jeepers Creepers could come, it could have been from outer space. But couldn't you say that about most aliens in alien movies? Well, I mean, or, I'm sorry, I think I'm demons in demon movies. Yeah. I think I'm also like the worst person to try to define like supernatural and stuff. Cause I don't believe in, I mean like in real, for realsies, 
I don't believe in ghosts. But I like watching the movies. I want to come back to that in just a minute. Yeah. But I think for me, I mean, f- going into it, is, is, I mean, I guess technically, if we're getting technical here, any, uh, possession horror movie could be a monster movie. You think like Exorcist, like, that's a monster. But, she was pretty monstrous. But it's the, because she was possessed thing. Jeepers Creepers, the, the creeper, whatever his name, I can't remember his name, if, or, uh, what do we, I don't remember what we called him. Jeeper. Or, yeah, it was Jeeper, period, creeper. Semicolon. Semicolon. Doctor. Uh, but for him, it was like, it, it, he's not possessed. He, he's just a killer. You know, he's just bad. Which in the same sense, the monster, a monster could be a serial killer. Right? Because they're, they got something go, going on wrong with their head. But what put that in their head? The devil? I don't know. Exactly. But we talked in our episode where we did the deep dive on monster movies. Yeah. We talked about how kind of like fear of the unknown is like the most basic human fear. And it's kind of like a thing that's yeah. just sort of genetically baked in and has kind of gone with us uh, over time. I feel like fear of the paranormal is definitely compounded because it's dealing with like a very unknown thing. But I kind of also feel like a lot of it might be learned. Like the idea of the exorcist, for example, Mm -hmm. is like a girl is possessed by an unseen force and that's terrifying. But do you think that that movie had a little bit of extra impact just because it came out in a culture that was sort of like informed by more Christian tradition. Yeah, I think absolutely without a doubt. Like I, I kind of feel like in different parts of the world, there are like different traditions and superstitions and things that are sort of a part of culture or that are taught to people that give them uh, maybe an aversion to certain types of non-physical things almost like, because it, it, it could go anywhere from like, superstition like I, I better not think a bad thought or else that thing might happen to me all the way to um you know don't hang an upside down cross mm-hmm. or something like that whereas if you didn't have any of that cultural training it might not ever occur to you that that was a thing to be scared of does that make sense no it it definitely does and i i kind of have a a, a a the way i look at this situation so um a lot of the times the things that you deal with and like superstitions that you have when you get older or like say you're in a say you're in an argument and it makes you sick to your stomach and you just hate arguing or something like you know to that extent or confrontations or something um you know a lot of that stems from your childhood you know so you you when you're a child you have to create these versions of you that protect you when you become an adult i'm not worried about getting in a confrontation at work as far as like you know getting fired or whatever it would suck but i'm not worried about it but i still get those nervous feelings like i would get say like when my boss is scolding me for whatever i get like that feeling like i'm in trouble by my dad you know that i'm fixing to get whooped or something like that and what that is is the younger uh version of me uh, trying to come out and protect me and I'm saying, Hey, no, I'm good. And so like when you have like the superstitions and like you, uh, quote unquote OCD moments where you're like, I feel like I need to lock the door three times before I can go to bed. A lot of those are things that are kind of stimming like some fear or something that popped up and you got to ask yourself because this has helped me, uh, um, you know, what's the worst thing that happens if I just lock it the one time, you know, it, it sounds weird because it sounds almost like it's fake, but anyways, it does help. So I think it's definitely from childhood, quote unquote trial, or I would say childhood trauma. Well, what's 
and I don't know that necessarily all of it is from trauma. Cause it doesn't I, I have to be. No, I think a lot of times you just kind of pick stuff up. Mm-hmm. And it, it may not have had any real, like, huge significance to you, right. but it may still just sort of form that. And, and I do agree that a lot of it probably comes from, like, when you're a kid and you just kind of get stuff kind of trained into you one way or another. Yeah. yeah. But just the idea of thinking about a uh, – that ghosts might live in a graveyard or thinking about the idea that a an old abandoned house might be haunted or thinking about the idea – that uh, a black cat might be unlucky. You know, there, there's just mm-hmm. all this stuff that you sort of pick up over time that doesn't have any real connection to personal experience. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've never been in a graveyard and seen a ghost. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a black cat and then had a, a bad experience happen and thought to myself, you know, I bet I know why that happened. Mm-hmm. I bet it was because of that cat that I saw. No, it's because some other guy wasn't paying attention and rear-ended me or whatever. So it's just... It's interesting to me because it's almost like a like we have this basic fear of the unknown and then we have this other layer of like mysticism almost baked on top of that. Yeah. That associates other stuff into that that's beyond our own physical experiences. And that's kind of crazy to me. Like the because you think about how powerful it is. Like being right. afraid of ghosts is a really powerful thing for a lot of people or of the devil or demons. And it's almost like it kind of rocks you on that even deeper level. Right. And and that's wild. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it definitely is. I, I still feel like it's, it's has to be from past experiences, not necessarily just childhood, but books, uh, movies, you know, whatever the case is. So it's definitely like Mm -hmm. influenced over, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely crazy to think about. Um, like, where did these come? Like, where does it, I have this weird thing where like, if I'm walking with, if I'm walking with someone, like I am, I don't like to be split like between a pole. Uh, I have read other people say that like that, that was, uh, in sports illustrated for kids. Oh, nice. As I date myself. <laughs> nice. There was always like a poster of a basketball player in the middle. And then it had like a random interview with them. Mm-hmm on the back and one of the questions was always like what's a random superstition you have straight up read some of them had said uh will not let something pass between me if i'm walking with another person yeah it's it's just strange i couldn't tell you where it came from mm-hmm. but you know i'm not worried about breaking a mirror or you know like anything yeah. like that but it's just weird things that you just hook hook onto and it's like well it's not hurting anyone we walk down like when you and i are walking down uh wherever you know i'll generally walk behind or get in front just mm-hmm. to make sure it's I don't know. It's just one of those things makes me feel more comfortable. Yeah. Um, but. Well, I, I, I'm curious how you feel about this subgenre yeah. in general, because I, f- I feel like you were very much raised in the church, mm-hmm. but you haven't been a part of that tradition for a long time. Thankfully. And so I'm just curious if, if the stuff like the, the demon stuff or hell or any of that is a thing that like activates anything in you from a horror perspective. Um, I feel like it does tend to come out sometimes where you just like, you feel, you, you know, like when, when you're a kid and you're going through what I would consider trauma of the church, uh, you second guess everything. So you're second guessing like music that you listen to, like all of a sudden you can't listen to Stairway to Heaven because it's bad or, you know, any way you want it. And journey and um when i'm an adult i i listen to music obviously obviously listen to music and i hear it and it's like uh oh, it kind of makes you know kind of like i i feel like a hesitate you know i get hesitation still because of like the experience i had when i was younger it's just the exact opposite i see the assholes that i dealt with in the church thinking like well these these dummies were believing this stuff or trying to push it down you know my throat uh, and yet, you know, they weren't taking care of their own backyard kind of thing. So for me, the reason why I don't is more like on a personal, like frustration with that, but it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the fact that I really like Blair Witch Project. I really like, um, you know, Paranormal Activity, uh, Insidious, um, the Conjuring movies, you know, like I really like them. 
I okay. like the idea of being in that situation, but do I think I will ever be in a situation that's legit haunted in real life? Absolutely not. Well, you kind of stole my thunder there because I was going to ask if maybe the ones that you found more compelling were the less like religious ones. Mm-hmm. Because I, I definitely see what you're saying with, with the idea of like the exorcist, because that, that feels like it has a lot of religious tradition baked into it. Mm-hmm. And I would have kind of predicted that that might throw you off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it definitely did. And I think even if like they go back and listen to that podcast, I think it was like a little torn. I mean, I don't hate the church or hate, you know, what people think of God or the devil or that they do. Like I, I think that they absolutely should do whatever they want. Um, but for me, it was just like kind of weird because you're like, eh get this preacher in here to to get this demon out interesting like for sure but it's for me it's no different than watching the terminator take bullets to his back you know it's just like it's just a story to me you know and i feel like people think the hobbit's interesting well that's obviously not based on true stories right and you know, still, still interesting and, and can be intriguing but there's the action these there's the extra thing with horror movies that you watch it because you want to get that feeling you know you want to get that you know intense feeling and that can come from them trying to get away it's kind of like when you walk down a hallway and it's dark and you feel like someone's behind you kind of thing and it just like i don't know if you ever had it but I, you know you get a little anticipation you kind of maybe a little pep in your step to get to your down the hall to your room or whatever the case you know whatever wherever the deal is like you still want that but it's just a story. Like that's the only way I see it, you know. And it's not a active decision watching these, like thinking, like, oh, I don't want to watch The Witch because, oh, it involves the devil, and that's not true. It's not real to me. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm here for the story. Well, did you feel any differently or any like more affected by a movie like Paranormal Activity? No, I definitely didn't. I don't think it. I think I just for when it comes to that, I just like the idea of it. You know, I like what don't, I don't like that they died and, and all how it all went down, but I like the story of how it was recorded so quick and that they did it themselves. And, you know, those are the things that stick out most to me with that and it's quality. You know, that's the other thing I feel like it's quality films. You know, we've seen, I mean, how many paranormal activity, like towards the end of, you know, it's like paranormal activity 10. That's like, we, I still watch them. It's, it's not the greatest of all time, but I still watch them because it's just in, in, entertaining. That's why I like horror movies. You know, it's just entertaining. So the, you don't really then get like that hair on the back of your neck stands up feeling generally with anything in this subgenre. It sounds like. No, I, I wouldn't say with, no, I think the only one that I would is like the ones that I, everyone kind of knows of like the, you know, slashers are the, the ones where people, like it could really happen for me, what I interpret that could really happen. Where you couldn't talk yourself out of it being right. real. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and I feel like a lot of people, and I'm trying to figure out why, but I feel like a lot of people feel like completely the opposite. And one thing that I, I find really interesting in kind of looking back through the movies that we've done podcasts on so far is that most of the ones that I would call paranormal or supernatural horror have come from like the mid eighties on and definitely way more post like 2000. Yeah. And so then I started looking into, well, what are some older movies, maybe even ones that we haven't done that came before that, that would fall into that genre. And so I think like Carrie from 1976, that's one that would be more of the uh, like psychic power type thing and i think that falls into it yeah you know the exorcist in 1973 obviously i think rosemary's baby in 1968 but then going back looking for stuff specifically older than that uh it was a lot of haunted houses it was a lot of almost like not meant to be super intense stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, there were a few like black sunday from 1960 was an Italian horror movie about witches. And that one may have gone a little harder. Um, 
And there were some other witch movies kind of sprinkled through there, like Horror Hotel in 1960, uh, The Terror in 1963, House of the Black Death in 1965. But really, a lot of it, it was just kind of more lightweight and more like haunted house stuff where you found out uh, in the end, like, oh, there were actually ghosts in there or something. Mm -hmm. And so I almost wonder if that was like a society thing. Is like there was just no appetite before that in the U.S. for movies that made you think about hell and demons, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's also the how common religion is, obviously, spe- specifically in the United States, but all over the world too. I mean, think of the Crusades and stuff, but it's just common. Like everyone knows it. So if you want to make a movie that's going to hit at home, make some money what's one thing everyone knows, you know, or like the number one selling book of all time is the Bible. So everyone, a lot of people know the Bible. So it's easy to, to feed off of. Well, I just kind of feel like in general, maybe people took it seriously enough that they didn't want to screw around with movies that depicted. Oh yeah. That stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's the case for sure too. And so that's really interesting to me, kind of looking back through the history of horror movies. And and it's hard to say, like, how much of it is society didn't want it versus the censors didn't want society to have it. Because yeah. I think for a long time that was kind of a, um, you know, a, a real factor. But it's just interesting looking through because I feel like paranormal is almost like a default for the horror genre now. Yeah. And, and if you look at some of the, you know, the bigger, like, franchises, a lot of it falls into that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there there weren't a whole lot of movies like that going on in, like, the 50s. And yeah. I don't know that they would have been effective even if they were created. Yeah, and, and I agree. And I and I have to think that, you know, better special effects definitely helped get those out there, get those stories yeah. out there. Because if you think about it, could you imagine, like, a... A ghost movie in the twenties, you know, dressed up like a, sh- you know, like a white sheet yeah, over there, <laughs> you know, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I, but I, yeah, I see exactly what you're saying and I definitely understand. And I think it's, I think it's just a common, you know, I think that in, you know, horror movies to come in the next few years are probably going to have a lot to do with viruses just because everyone knows about, the, about COVID, you know, and, and things like that. And I think that's what people knew about. And that's what they really focused on, especially a long time ago. And, and that they were still hesitant to like take the dive. But I do think that the people who rate movies or, you know, like allow mo- um, wherever that place is called, um, that, you know, it's their personal yeah. opinion. They're like the exorcist is rated R or yeah. it needs to be rated X because it, it's like, no, it doesn't. No, nope. no, it definitely doesn't. We're also numb to things now, but yeah. um, how do, how do you like? Are you the exact? I mean, because you were raised in a similar situation. Yeah, well, so for me, a lot of stuff with it was. I feel like I got fed a lot of things like don't ever play with a Ouija board because that could, like, summon a demon. Mm-hmm. Like that that could bring a, a you know the devil would target you. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a lot of what, what I grew up with was like things that you did that would make the devil target you. Right. But it it was always very like vague as to what that meant or what would come from it. But then there was also some stuff that was like, uh, you know, the different paths that would lead you to possession where you could end up being possessed. And mm-hmm. so there was some of that to it. And then, you know, kind of some, I guess, general stuff about like demons. But the way that that stuff was explained to me as a kid really never felt very specific. And it, right. it kind of felt almost more like very much like superstition. And so I think for a lot of this stuff, I mean, there there was probably a time when I, like early teenager and stuff when like a Ouija board would have probably like legit kind of made me feel weird Mm -hmm. you know not like a oh i'm completely scared but like i just don't know that i want to to play with that i wouldn't want to chance it right whereas now i don't think i really have those hang-ups much at all um Mm. i do really like the idea of movies though like um paranormal activity because for me it's almost like i couldn't talk myself out of the situation Mm -hmm. so it's like well if i was just sitting at home and you know, a book just flew off the countertop. 
what would I do? How would right. I explain that to myself? How would I, you know, try to get, and so it's almost uh, more like the psychological element of that. I think that right. connects with me more so than the fact that it's like, Oh, it's a ghost and I'm scared of ghosts. Gotcha. If that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely does. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I would be interested to hear from our listeners kind of what horror subgenres like really hit with them. Mm -hmm. And if there are elements in paranormal horror movies that they find particularly like disturbing, because I bet I've heard from a hundred people that like, Oh yeah, movies don't scare me unless they get into possession stuff. And that really freaks me out. Yeah. Which just, it, cause I've heard it too. And it just confuses the hell out of me. Like for me, it's like, I'm just like, what? Well, and I think it's that, that idea of we've all just kind of grown up or a lot of people in the United States have grown up with the idea that that that's a thing that could happen. Yeah. And also not a lot of specific information about it or what you would do if it did happen, you know, and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think a lot of a lot of the impressions of it are probably from movies that are horror movies that are meant to scare you. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I had a couple I wanted to ask you about okay. just kind of how you feel like they fit in. Yeah. Um, would you call evil dead, the evil dead series paranormal? Uh, I would call that. Ooh, is that paranormal or, or is it, uh, zomber? Uh, Ooh, uh, yeah. Paranormal. I think the first one for sure was De- demonic possession. Yeah. Yeah. I would. The army of darkness seemed a little less straightforward to me right yeah but yeah um and then what about the babadook Babadook, uh i I don't know what was the did did we ever figure out like where babadook came i mean i've only watched the movie like a thousand times (laughs) right i should know i don't know i i think i guess i would always consider that like a um like a monster monster in it. well no because she gets possessed i don't know if that's an in-betweener dude yeah and i i felt like that and then candy man maybe was kind of in a similar vein where yeah. it's a little bit hard because it's like the idea is well it was a person to start with but then it's almost like the person became something more in candy man yeah like chucky too that that was actually next on my list was oh, child's shit. play um because yeah with that one it's like well the doll is possessed yeah technically but also the doll is like the monster like that that one has a lot of elements i guess it does have like serial killer or monster yeah. you know so yeah. i guess with with child's play it does have more of a of a um possession because of how it all went down like in, yeah. in the initial um yeah it's crazy the how well that these like tie into each other you know yeah between monster and supernatural well, and I think a lot of times what we see is some of the more enduring horror movies are ones that take elements from multiple subgenres mm-hmm. and mix them together in like a fresh or new way for the time. Oh, yeah. And then that makes like a new experience that sort of taps into a different type of fear maybe than others. And so that's something right. that I think is kind of cool. What about like Get Out? Uh, That one I thought Psychological. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Uh that's crazy to think about, though. Yeah. And then one thing I wanted to bring up, too, is just I do, and I know that we've talked about this before, but I am always kind of interested in the paranormal horror movies based on, like, religion or tradition or lore from other cultures. Yes. And so that's one thing I found really interesting about, like, his house that I watched, you know, a few weeks ago was that that was based off like an African legend that I had no exposure to ahead of time. But it, it was interesting how many, like how similar that felt to more of like a uh, typical witch movie in mm-hmm. the United States. Yeah. I think that's one of my more favorite things about like researching like Native American things, trying to read about Native American like horror figures mm-hmm. and things like that. I just think it's, I think it's super interesting, you know? Yeah. Because it's like these guys, you know, when did it come up? If it came up before the, um, you know, before being influenced, it's like, oh, this is just pure, like, imagination, no religion, anything, you know, it's just straight up, uh, 
imagination and I just love it. I think it's great. Yeah, it, it's all or, interesting I mean, stuff. And I also have now a <laughs> kind of a long list of movies that came out before 1970 that are <laughs> uh, paranormal horror. Mm-hmm. And so that may be a thing we can can look at in the yeah. future. Uh, a lot of them are like not from the U.S. So good. Yeah. Those Italians, man, they really went for it. I don't know. Those in Westerns. I think for me, like, I definitely, I don't think I would say, like, Paranormal or Supernatural is, like, my definitive favorite, but I definitely, some of my favorites are in that genre. Mm-hmm. I guess I just, you know, for me, it's just like, like, I'm, I feel like I'm relatively simple, like, it's black or white kind of thing, like, I like it or I don't, mm-hmm. and, um, it doesn't matter the content of it. Like it could be Godzilla that I really like, or it could be, um, the witch or whatever, you know, the case is, or like, I might not like it because I didn't like the dialogue of the witch or didn't understand it, you know, kind of thing. Um, so for me, it's, I'm just looking for a good story and I really like people who DIY it and just like come up with it on them on their, you know, on their own. And, you know, I don't get, they don't get free passes for that. So, but I still, I still like it, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, you turn out the lights in any how, you know, I'm, I'm living in this house since 2018. And if I turn out all the lights, I still get weird feelings, you know, like someone's watching or something's, but all you have to do is turn the lights back on and everything's back to the way it was. So it's just like, ah, we're good. We're going to make it. I can't believe we didn't even bring up a ghost story. <laughs> I'm still pissed off, Sarah, about that one. The only thing I liked about it was the actual ghost in it. I liked, yeah. it. I liked the sheet look. That's, I think, where I got the idea for the ghost cowboy ghost tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, the only other one I had in my notes that I hadn't figured out a way to work in yet was just that High Plains Drifter was ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That definitely was. Yeah. Uh, that was Italian, wasn't it? Or no, it was influenced by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, just super quick, a super quick rundown of some that would fall into this are like Sinister, The Conjuring series, Drag Me to Hell, Hell House LLC, The Haunting, A Ghost Story, Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, Poltergeist, Ghost Ship, Hereditary, The Shining, Candyman, Blair Witch, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Paranormal Activity, Lights Out, The Witch, Jew on the Grudge, His House. Like, that's a lot of movies that fall into this, and those are all like 1982 or later. So... Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't really stopped to think about how, and and I really feel like probably Rosemary's Baby first, but then The Exorcist second, and its success, even though it was like crossing that boundary, really opened things up and really proved that this was like effective, but also a thing people would actually go see. And it's kind of wild that it was like in the 70s before that really broke open. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's one thing. I think it's also money, you know, Rosemary's baby. Yeah. I'm sure made some money. And then if you think about it, five years later, the exorcist came out, which I'm sure was able to get the pass because of Rosemary's baby had something to do with it. And then that be like, that was like the first horror film. I think they ever be nominated for Academy award or something like that. And yeah, the nominated for Academy award best picture, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, well after that, it's like, Give give people a couple years and they'll be trying to reproduce and reproduce and oh for sure yeah, yeah. somebody always has to go first though yeah so. what would you say is your favorite paranormal movie not paranormal activity but like in that oh, genre man. I was gonna say actually for me I think paranormal activity yeah. is a really good example of this just because of. I feel like it pulls in a lot of elements of like psychological, but also kind of, uh, monster a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I kind of, I, I'd wonder. Maybe not. When I was thinking about it, I was kind of thinking like, do I like those because of the found footage that puts you in the shoes of the person who's having trouble or. Yeah. And it's, which who cares? Honestly, like it's regardless, like 
just because it's found footage doesn't mean I like it, and just because it's paranormal doesn't mean I like it. You know, it's just like it's a good combo of both. Who who yeah. cares how we got there? I'm just glad we did, because that's a damn good film. Yeah, and as we've talked about, I think we talked about this before. I really feel like found footage in general works a lot better with more like psychological and paranormal type stuff oh, yeah. than it does with something more action oriented. Yeah. Just because when it's, you know, a lot of movement and stuff, it, it can be kind of hard to follow. Whereas when it's like the more subtle, like camera catching things in the background and stuff, I feel like that works really well. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd see that for sure. And that's it for today's episode. If you've listened this far, then thank you. And we hope you've enjoyed it. We're always looking for new ideas. So if you have any questions, comments, or movie suggestions, please send us an email at thehorrificpod at gmail.com or feel free to comment on or message our Facebook page. Just search for The Horrific Podcast. Thanks for listening.